pick them up. They always sell for me. Hey, Bolo Buddies. Thanks for watching. All right, you guys, in this video, we're going to talk about my bread and butter bolos, items I sold on eBay for $35 or less. I'm going to tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. These items I sourced probably pretty cheap because I usually source pretty cheap. So when we go over each item, you're going to hear about where I got it. And that's kind of fun. So the first item here is this Play School Heroes Transformers Rescue Bots. Now, this is the crane. This is the big guy. It does have another piece that goes with it that will attach, but I did not have that. So this is incomplete. And again, this is a bigger one. I sold this for a best offer of $18 and the buyer paid shipping. And I just told you I was going to tell you where I got it and what I paid for it. I didn't write it down for this one, so uh, sorry about that. Probably got it at a garage sale, thrift store, or the bins. I'm not sure. This one here is broken. Um, if you are not familiar with Jewelry 10 by Cynthia, I think it's Chung, definitely get familiar with it. This is a Jewelry 10, right? There's the stamp. This is a broken item. The whole tail is broken off. Did you see it? It's broken off. So I am just selling this for parts or repair. And I'm thinking, this is going to sit forever. This is going to take forever to sell. You guys, it did not. It sold pretty quickly. And I sold it for $26 and the buyer paid shipping. So they didn't even make me an offer. They paid my sale price. This here is a vintage Fisher Price people, um, adventure people dog. It's got movable legs. It's not in perfect condition. It is old. It's vintage. And I sold this for $15.50 and the buyer paid shipping. And I got this at a garage sale for 50 cents. The next item are these uh, toys right here. They are Hot Wheels. And my title is horrible, horrible. I should have had trucks. I should have had vehicles. I should have had something in this listing. It's an old listing. It's been listed since 2020. Um, I ended up selling these for a best offer of $15 plus shipping. If I had to guess, keywords probably would have helped me sell this item. So don't do what I do. <laughs> this was really old and I guess I was just being lazy, but these were not in great condition and I still made a nice profit on those. I don't remember where I got them, probably like in a big old toy bundle at a garage sale or something like that. This one is really cool. This is a vintage Walt Disney World Pluto Hound plush leash. It is for um, autographs. So when you go to Disney, uh, people sign this is what my research showed me. So I put autographs in the title. I got this at a garage sale for 25 cents, sold it for $21.70 plus shipping and got a really nice uh, message from the buyer that it was something that they had been looking for. And it's got a little strap on it so you can kind of wear it as you get it autographed. It's not in perfect condition, but really fun, cool item. This is a Toucan Collective New York Packable Sun Hat Visor. It is, uh, I got it at a thrift store for $2, took a best offer of $20 and the buyer paid shipping. So I did take half of what I had it listed for. Sometimes if I've had things for a while, I just want to move them. So lowball offers. Let's talk about lowball offers. Do I take them sometimes? Yes. If I've if I got the item cheap and I've had it listed a long time, I will take um I, I don't even consider that. I mean, it's half off. So most of you would consider that a lowball offer. The only time I really get offended is when somebody offers me a dollar for something. That that can be a little frustrating, or five dollars um, if it's a like hundred dollar item and they offer me 10%. That that's a little frustrating, but for the most part, I just counter offer and move on. The next item is this Mega Blocks Musical Farm Sound Bar for Blocks replacement, tested and working. I got this at the Goodwill bin, sold it for $15 and 50 cents and the buyer paid shipping. Um, I would love to hear your opinion on what you consider a low ball offer. Uh, I think because I source cheap, I'm a little more um, open to offers than maybe somebody who's doing retail arbitrage. If you're buying something for 15 and flipping it for 30 and you get an offer for 15, that's considered probably a low ball offer and very frustrating for you. If I'm buying something for 25 cents, 
you know, I have more wiggle room. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think or consider a lowball offer. Wade England ceramic figurine Halloween pumpkin with a dog. I got this at a garage sale. I was just in a bundle of stuff, so I don't remember what I paid for it. I sold it for $10.54 and the buyer paid shipping. This is a Febreze Small Spaces air freshener replacement. It is just for the unit, the base only. Uh, this part up here, the actual scented part, I, I think it was like, uh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, dried up. Yes, that's the word. Just look at my title. The scent looks like it's been dried up. Base unit only. I got this at the Goodwill Bins, sold it for $10 plus shipping. The reason I picked this up is because a lot of times the scents are um, retired. Also the units that the base, they don't maybe make this base unit anymore. So I thought I would try it. I got it at the bins, you know, new old stock, threw it in my cart. I figured that the actual air freshener part was still good, but when I got it home, it was dried up. The next item, my husband is a good listener. Um, he remembered that I told him to pick up Jelly Cat and he was at an estate sale and he got this for $2. He's like, I don't know if it's a good one, but I got you a surprise out there. And I looked and it was a jelly cat and I'm like, yes. And it was a good one. Uh, he paid $2 for it and I sold it for $27 plus shipping. So it's always nice when the husband listens. Uh, jelly cat right there. That's what you're looking for. He probably looked pretty funny buying all those plush from the from the estate sale. They're probably like, what is this man doing buying plush? <laughs> anyway, Lane Bryant pants. Uh, I, you guys have seen these in my videos before. I have sold a ton of these. Uh, I think I had different sizes. So I've sold 18 in this size. I still have 15 available and I've got them listed on sale for $13. The buyer offered me 10. So I went ahead and took that. They are Lane Bryant linen pants. My cost of goods is $3 or less for these. I picked them up at in bulk at a uh, discount store. I think, let me think. I'm trying to think. Uh, discount Fashion Warehouse is where I got those. This here is Fisher Price Little People Wheelies cars. And I probably could have priced these higher and held out for more. But I ended up selling them for a best offer of $11 plus shipping. It was one of those days where I just wanted to sell some stuff. And I got these at the bin, so probably had a couple bucks in them. This has been listed since 2020. And you can see I've got it right here so you guys can see. This is a long tail retail arbitrage item. List it and forget it. Um, I talked about this in another video. A misconception of new sellers is that everything is going to sell fast. You are going to list it and it is going to sell within a week. That is not the reality of reselling. So my reselling, um, my idea of reselling is list it and forget it. Uh, I feel like if I have touched that item and I have listed it, there is no reason for me to go back in and pull that item and take it down. Like I've already done the work. Now I can see doing sell similar or relisting the item to get more eyes on your item, which is something I should do. And if I had more time, I would do that, but I don't. So I just list it and forget it. So listed this one in 2020, and that was probably a sell similar relist in 2020 because I've had this item a long time. Um, it's a very small size. It's a size 25. So this is, you know, for somebody who has a very tiny waist, small sizes are harder to sell. Um, I probably had three bucks or less in these, sold them for $14.30 in the buyer paid shipping. And I believe I got those at Gabriel Brothers. This right here is a breast cancer awareness pin. I can't remember where I got these, but I got a ton. Um, I have over 20 available. I've already sold 10. This is one of those where you list it multi-quantity and list it and forget it. And this person bought four of them for a total of $12.96. They were all in for $18.03 with my shipping discount. This one here has been listed since 2020. Also, it is a K Bethos Money Bling Snapback Fitted Hat. <laughs> it's got a money symbol on it. I got this in a mystery uh, box from Auctions for You a long time ago. It did take a long time to sell. Maybe my keywords weren't good. I don't know. But it sold and I made a nice profit. I sold it for $16.24 plus shipping.
This is an express sweater. Another thing that has been listed a long time. Um, bought a bunch of duplicates. This also came from Discount Fashion Warehouse. Had $3 or less in it. Buy a lot of express from there. Um, I don't shop there anymore. I've really gotten out of clothing. So when I sell clothing items, they have typically been listed for a long time in my store. I usually don't show you the solds, but I kind of wanted to bring up some of these list it and forget it ideas of mine. <laughs> and you guys can let me know down in the comments if you agree with the list it and forget it. Sold this for $16.25 plus shipping. So still a fantastic process profit just had to wait on it to sell. This one here I bought on Whatnot. I got this from Noelle, Farm Girl Scavenger Noelle, her Whatnot show. And Vintage Vanity Fair is definitely something that I look for. Now, this one's a little bit different. It has a small stain on it and it has shoulder pads. So I wasn't sure how well this one was going to do. If I remember correctly, I paid $5 for this plus shipping. And um, you can see right here, it's a really, really old tag. But Vintage Vanity Fair can definitely be a bolo. So be on the lookout. I sold this for $31 and the buyer paid shipping. And again, I picked this up on Whatnot from Farm Girl Scavenger Noelle. She also has a YouTube channel. Check her out. She is super, super knowledgeable and you will learn a lot from her YouTube channel. I will link her down below. And whatnot. If you're not on whatnot, check her out there. Check me out there. There's a link down below. You can get $15 to shop when you use my referral link. And that is on whatnot. Come see us, source some items cheap and flip them on eBay. Whatnot is a great place to source. And you can use that $15 to shop with anyone. It does not have to be me. This is an Oneida uh, replacement baby fork. And I got this at the Goodwill bin. So my cost of goods was very, very cheap, probably 15, 20 cents, sold it for $7.44 plus shipping. The next item are these Wacky Launchers SpongeBob SquarePants cake toppers. So somebody bought that and they also bought this Kermit the Frog bottle lid topper. So they paid, let's see, for the SpongeBob $7 plus shipping. And then they paid $7 for this and I gave them free shipping on this because, um, with the new auto pay, when they make offers, the bad thing about it is you cannot combine shipping because it does an auto payment. So I, I don't know. I kind of like being able to combine this shipping invoice for people. So I do have certain things set up where it does it automatically, but it doesn't do it in all situations. So let me know what you guys think about the auto pay for best offers. I'm sure you're all loving it. The next item is this vintage Disney Lion King plate and bowl. I got this at the Goodwill bins, sold it for $17 plus shipping. And there's what the back looks like. This Jungle Joe's Safari Friends Bear with Backpack Plush, I also got at the Goodwill bins, so probably had a buck or less in it. And I sold this for $7 plus shipping. Now, when I'm at the Goodwill bins and I'm buying stuff, I'm usually just throwing things in my cart. I don't comp a lot of items. I just buy them. If they're cheap and if they're long tail, I'm okay with long tail. I am a long tail seller. That's why I say list it and forget it. I will be fine if something sits for three to five years because it's not, it's, it's flooded. Another thing is plush. If it's flooded on B eBay, cross post those items to Poshmark and Mercari, even Etsy. I use list perfectly to cross post. There's a video down below that shows you how to use list perfectly if you check that out and you want to use it, um, you can get 30% off your first month with coupon referral code BOLO Buddies. Also, Mercari, a lot of times plush sell for more and quicker over there. Even Poshmark. Plush is great. Um, if you join with my referral link Poshmark down below, you're going to get $10 to shop. If you join Mercari with my referral link down below, you're going to get $10 to shop and another $20 to shop when you sell $100 worth of stuff. I know a bunch of you have come over to Mercari with that referral link um, and Poshmark. You guys, how are you doing on those platforms with plush and other items? What is the item that you think sells best on those other platforms if you're selling on those platforms? Let me know down in the comments. All right. This one here is a vintage 2000 The Simpsons, Bart Simpsons, Homer and Keychain, Homer Keychain. 
Um, sold it for $12.40 plus shipping. This is another item that has been listed a long time. I picked up a whole bunch of the Simpsons items at a thrift store. It was, oh my goodness. It was an amazing, amazing deal. I bought a whole box and it was the play sets and the figures. And I was just going to donate the play sets. And my husband's like, I think you should put the people that go with the play sets with the play sets. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be annoying to ship. I don't want to figure out what goes with what. And if you have been here a while, you know this story. My husband went through and he put all the figures that went with the play sets so that I didn't have to do it. And I will tell you, I made way more money because he did that. So um, I don't know what got into him, but he felt like looking these up for me. And I was like, sweet. But this was from that bundle. This one was a little bit different and took a long time to sell. But man, some of those Simpsons play sets are a big money bolo and they will sell quick. I got this at the Goodwill bins and it looks ridiculous on my mannequin, but I wanted to show how it fits. So I put it on this mannequin that is an adult and it just looks ridiculous. I'm looking at it like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this sold. It is by disguise. It is a cookie monster costume. Got it at the Goodwill bins. Took a best offer of 15 plus shipping. These are blue and white baseball guys. I bought a um, container at the Goodwill bins and it had... Um, baseball, football, and hockey. And I ended up parting it out. I sold the goalies separately. I divided them up by which sport it was. And I ended up doing really well. I sold these for a best offer of $12 and the buyer paid shipping. Now I will say that there was some weight to it. So I probably had between five and $7 in the entire set, but I think I sold like one goalie for seven to 10 or something like that. This is a Ninja Turtles secret layer replacement floor piece. And you're looking at this and you're like, oh, that's easy to ship. No, it was a pain. It's actually a pretty big part. And I probably should have put the measurements in it. Um, it's a base piece. So it was bigger. And man, oh man, it was, I couldn't find a box. So I had to build something and it just was not worth it. I sold this for $9 plus shipping. And it is from a Ninja Turtle set that I parted out and made way more money because I parted out the item. I talk about this one all the time. I picked this up actually recently over the this summer, just like a month ago, at um, a garage sale. And I paid, I think, a buck for it. It's the night before Christmas. If you see these mini ornament books, pick them up. They always sell for me. Maybe I'm just lucky and they sell for me and everybody else they don't sell for. I don't know, but I always sell them. And I sell them for good money. Um, I ended up taking a best offer of $18 plus shipping. I listed this on October 10th and it sold on October 15th. Five days it took to sell you guys. Five days, $18 plus shipping for that. And it's a little uh, Christmas ornament book. And they come in many, many different shapes, sizes, and different books, different stories, this one is a Kurt Adler from 1977. I have sold this one, I don't know how many times, multiple, like maybe five times, six, possibly more. Embroidery floss. I've got a whole bunch of embroidery floss listed. I put in the title, the little number there, 699 for this one. And I have 12 available. I have sold three. This person bought two of them for a total of $23.40 plus shipping. So two lots of 12 is what they bought. Poly Pocket Compact. These are teeny tiny. I got these at the Goodwill bins. So my cost of goods was probably less than a dollar. I did take an offer of $5. It was one of those days. Sales were slow. I'm like five bucks. I'm just going to take it. Buyer paid shipping. That is what they look like. And Poly Pocket varies. These did not have any of the figures or anything like that. So I went ahead and took that offer. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I hope to see you over on Whatnot. Check out those referral links down below. There's other video content down there that are going to help you guys on your reselling journey. Thanks for watching.